The first ever Tesla RoboTaxi has been spotted testing in Austin, Texas in the United States today. They've been testing for a few days, maybe a few weeks now, but this is the first time somebody's captured a driverless Tesla vehicle in Austin on video. Big moment and a big deal. Although I look very much forward to the point in the future when nobody gives a shit anymore because this is so commonplace that we're used to it. This has got a lot of tongue swagging and Elon Musk has disclosed a few specific Tesla milestones and exact dates regarding robo taxis and autonomy so let's check that out now owen asked elon musk when do first public rides start we're all drooling over that one tiny clip from today elon responds tentatively june 22nd he adds we are being super paranoid about safety so the date could shift additionally first tesla that drives itself from factory end of line all the way to a customer house is june 28th which by the way happens to be musk's birthday now, obviously, these dates could change, but we're talking at most a couple of weeks in terms of the targeted date, not only for the first autonomous rides, paid fares to the public in Austin in Tesla Robotaxis, but a massive shift in logistics where vehicles produced at the Giga Texas factory will drive themselves to customers, at least in the Austin area initially. Musk also commenting on Sawyer Merritt, who shared this video about the first Model Y Robotaxi being spotted in Austin, with the caption, beautifully simple design he ain't wrong vision only a slick vehicle a far cry from the butt ass ugly abominations currently on roads under the waymo brand musk had a lot more to say on x as well reposting that post from himself adding these are unmodified tesla cars coming straight from the factory meaning that every tesla coming out of our factories is capable of unsupervised self-driving but please don't tell the Wall Street analysts who don't seem to have figured this one out yet. Stuart asked Elon Musk if it's a new version of software, what's the version, blah, blah, blah. Musk confirms it's a new version of software, but will merge to the main branch soon. He adds, we have a more advanced model in alpha stage that has around four times the parameters, but still requires a lot of polishing. That's probably ready for deployment in a few months. Today, Dave Lee posts this high likelihood, in my opinion, that Tesla signs an FSD licensing deal with at least one automaker by end of year will likely take a couple of years for the automaker to actually integrate the FSD hardware and sell the cars. By the way, uh, this is true. Could be at least two, three plus years. The slow moving nature of legacy automotive manufacturers means the gap between signing a deal and actual first vehicles capable of operating Tesla FSD is going to be years too long. And what I mean by that is anything longer than a matter of months is too long, but they're not going to have much choice. Just imagine a world in which Tesla vehicles are operating throughout the United States and other parts of the world with FSD autonomously, legally, and a company like Ford or Pick Your Legacy Automotive Manufacturer having already signed a deal with Tesla is still scrambling to actually start producing the vehicles capable of offering this same service. Two years is too long. Three years is too long. Wild times ahead. Back to Dave's post. But I think the announcement will be a surprise to most observers and analysts because this will be a new line of business for Tesla and not many people are expecting it to be announced so soon. The Austin RoboTaxi launch could be a catalyst that gives other automakers the confidence to ink a Tesla FSD licensing deal. I think he's right. And of course, on FSD licensing, this has been utterly inevitable going back a number of years. Why? Tesla's approach to autonomy, their unassailable data lead, it was inevitable at some point in the future. Tesla massively scales a fleet of RoboTaxis, stunning most analysts, most investors, most of the world. How the fuck did they do that? Companies will be scrambling to try and compete and then go, you know what? There's no point trying to do what Tesla's done. They've already solved the problem. Let's just license this software from Tesla. This is why from day one, when I first published my Tesla valuation model on Patreon, back in 2021, I already had over the decade long time frame the commencement of FSD licensing deals with Tesla from legacy automotive manufacturers. That's how inevitable this outcome was, even going back a number of years. Elon Musk replied to Dave's post, the automakers keep being told that this isn't real or that just buying some hardware from Nvidia will solve it. As Tesla Robotaxis become widespread and their other solutions don't work, they will naturally turn to us. Robert posts this observation after the video of the first Tesla Robotaxi testing in Austin spotted. Unlike other autonomous vehicle companies, Tesla had its customers, one, pay for the R&D, two, pay for the cars, and three, do the AI training. Now, these are all accurate points. I've mentioned these in the past. It's kind of crazy, but actually true. Other companies were paying engineers six figures to drive the vehicles around to train them, paying another company to produce the vehicle and covering them in sensors, as opposed to Tesla selling a vehicle that was proactively collecting data and utilizing interventions and driving behavior from customers to train the vehicle to get better. 400 IQ stuff. 
To this, Elon responds, the streets will change very rapidly. Autonomous cars will be very common throughout the world in two to three years. And can confirm this seems to me like a reasonable estimate. After all, Tesla already has 8 million vehicles on roads. Two to three years from now, well in excess of 10 million vehicles will be capable of operating FSD. The question is regulatory approval. But with the phenomenal rate of progress you're seeing across the board with AI, it seems extremely obvious to me that Tesla will have an extremely compelling case for the safety profile of their software just about everywhere on earth, being able to prove beyond reasonable doubt that their software two to three years from now is far safer than human drivers. Therefore, it'll get regulatory approval in almost every country they ask for, almost every state, region, city. There'll be a few exceptions, but they're not going to move the needle. I really don't think most investors are ready for this. How quickly Tesla scales from one vehicle being spotted testing, although there's a few more than one vehicle in Austin at the moment, to tens of thousands, to hundreds of thousands, and then millions. In response to Musk's post that inevitably automakers will come to Tesla to license FSD, Joseph writes, Gary Black disagrees. He thinks Uber can do it shortly after. Of course, Gary correcting the record. No, that's not what I said. I said other auto manufacturers will achieve unsupervised autonomy. Just as I, by the way, it's so funny just to imagine, by the way, any quote automotive manufacturer figuring out unsupervised autonomy brother please if he was arguing maybe some tech companies could eventually get there okay but auto manufacturers come on so let's continue to read the post i said other auto manufacturers will achieve unsupervised autonomy just as i argued in 2020 other auto manufacturers would make high quality evs without going bankrupt about which tesla uberbulls strongly disagreed with me by the way i'm among them as with evs uber will offer others driverless capabilities on its platform at a reduced cost now gary's an investor manages money so uh I feel I need to raise the awkward and very large elephant in the room here. I can count on a fingerless hand, just need one thumb, how many companies today are making any money selling electric vehicles. Ready? One, Tesla. That's the list. Now, call me crazy, but if other auto manufacturers are making, quote, high quality electric vehicles, but they need to sell them at losses, I think they are on the road to bankruptcy. Now, obviously, a miracle could happen. <laughs> Probably won't, but this is not the big counterpoint that gary thinks it is all roads currently point to every company that isn't tesla today producing electric vehicles going bankrupt trying to compete with tesla on costs even in china as i've said in the past BYD is making a little bit of money but not selling electric vehicles they don't report separately but it's their battery business the cell supply business is carrying the company now look there will be some companies that do survive although i doubt many legacy auto companies will but this is not the point gary thinks it is and uh call me crazy but to expect automotive manufacturers who haven't been able to figure out how to profitably produce compelling electric vehicles at scale, which have some similarities with internal combustion engines, you know, they've got tires and wheels and doors and windows, though under the hood it's quite different. To expect them to suddenly pivot and become world-class at AI and solve unsupervised autonomy? <laughs> Bro! Oh, Gary, whatever you're smoking, please save some. Now, I do love Gary. He provides a very interesting insight into how Many traditional investors think about Tesla around autonomy. I think they're going to be shocked at how rapidly Tesla scales their fleet of vehicles globally and how much in terms of the profits Tesla captures in the robo-taxi market. There may be many other companies offering autonomous rides in the future, trying to compete with Tesla and cost and losing money doing so and inevitably headed to bankruptcy, just like today, EV manufacturers are on the exact same path. So to recap, obviously cool to see the first Tesla robo-taxi in the wild. More interesting though is Elon Musk disclosing the 22nd of June is Tesla's targeted date for the first paid fare, public fare, in a Tesla robotaxi in Austin. Less than two weeks away. And the 28th, the targeted date for the first Tesla vehicle produced in Texas to deliver itself to a customer from production line to driveway. A new era has begun. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.